Hello my soccer universe to a review of the round of 16 at the AFCON and it's official this AFCON was not a tournament for the favorites I've already said it in my short videos which you can all watch on the channel as well for quick updates but we have the four semifinalists from the last AFCON are already out the big favorites in Morocco are already out there are almost no big name teams left there are two teams, big names left in Nigeria and Cote, Cote d'Ivoire where you never really thought at the beginning they have a real shot at winning this tournament. But the way it's panning out, they look actually quite good. It has also been a rough AFCON for my collection because of the eight teams in the quarters, I have only four in my collection and two of them are meeting. So yes, some... I actually took care, I got a fifth one, but it's also meeting somewhere, so yeah, it's maybe not the perfect uh, buy, but it's a beautiful shirt and this will be revealed hopefully towards the end of the week ahead of the uh, quarterfinals. But yes, this was a really, really interesting round. Uh, I mean, so many upsets. Some of the games were kind of so so, but then we had also some highly, highly entertaining ones in there. The hosts that barely scraped under the round, round number 16 found their next level against the uh, favorites at the time uh, in Senegal and beat them on penalties in pro with the matchup of the round. Although I think there were also some interesting ones. We have no North African team is present anymore. No North African. And I made this almost like a throwaway line in, in my preview that North African teams are not doing well uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa, which, yeah, you may or may not. You know, Egypt went to the final last time. They also won south uh, of the Sahara and so on. But there is usually that trend. But that is really that obvious. Boy, boy, boy. Really exciting tour tournament. I really enjoyed it to the point where I really... At the moment, the AFCON is my main focus. Everything else can take a little bit of a step back, although, you know, there are some nice games coming up as well in the leagues in Europe. But I would say let's uh, quickly recap uh, the games. Probably the most entertaining 45 minutes happened between, well, the first half between Angola and Namibia. So you started on a high kind of. And, you know, two outsiders, Na Angola winning uh, their, their group, Namibia actually um, having ousted Tunisia, also a big achievement on their part. And it looked well for Namibia, they launched a counter-attack and uh, the Angolan goalkeeper is sent off for handling the ball outside of the box. So Namibia already in the 17th minute with a man up. However, Angola play a really, really nice attack in the 38th minute where I think it was uh, Mabululu, a deep ball to Fred, uh, who puts it over to uh, Gelson Dalla, and it's 1-0. It was a brilliantly played goal, and then everything, everything fell apart from the, the, the Namibia. Two minutes later, uh, Hakongo is sent off with a yellow-red, <laughs> then uh, from, from the free kick, again Fred free kick to Gelson Dalla, and it's 2-0, so... Man advantage gone and you're two goals down. However, Namibia, not to be deterred, try to get big uh, back in the game, put Angola a little bit on the back foot, but Mabululu in the 66th minute, uh, again, Jelson Dalla, the star of the show, uh, puts it home, puts a, a nice car, car counter at home, and then uh, it was 3 0. I think they hit even the crossbar. So, Angola moving on, that's a team that has not qualified for the last AFCON. Just saying. Uh, the big one between Nigeria and Cameron was a bad affair, to be honest. Uh, there was an early goal by Jay uh, that uh, was rightly called off for offside, although it was a little bit of a confusing scene. Uh, Osimen uh, on the counter attack said, said, said look, look man, it's 1-0 for Nigeria. And that was more or less the only chance in the game. Cameron really couldn't get much going. Same thing in the second half, where Nigeria was a little bit more threatening uh, on the little bit that they offered. Now the Ademo Lukman makes it 2-0. So uh, almost a totally anonymous exit by, Ka by Cameroon, which is really sad, sad to say, but it almost felt like if Cameroon wasn't there, no one would have bothered. On, 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 honestly. Then we had the duel of the Guineas where Equatorial Guinea that uh, were actually quite good in the group stage. For some reason things didn't fall. Yes, they were um, a little bit more dominant in the fur first half, but then Bicoro gets sent off in the 55th minute. They still get a penalty that Ensue sees uh, uh, cannot convert. And then deep into stoppage time, Bio, 98th minute. 
get the winner for Guinea. Honestly, I didn't see much of, of the match, I saw a few highlights. Um, that one did not work out for me, but I was surprised that uh, Guinea went on, because especially that how Equatorial Guinea was actually dominant in the group stage. On the other side, you know, if, I mean, if, if you miss a penalty, you're a man down, yeah, things did not go your way, that's for sure. Then in the evening, we had a big one between Egypt and the DRC and, you know, the whole Mohamed Salah drama. He's in Liverpool, uh, hoping to come back to the AFCON and Egypt, it was a typical game. Egypt have more possession of the ball. Uh, it was also a duel of two winless teams. Both of them qualified with three draws, which is also an achievement. Um, but it was tight. I mean, this DRC squad is I don't want to say stacked, but I think this is a decent squad. And they take the lead through a, um, a throw-in that was contested, and Egypt was very much in for, con uh, for contesting that one. Uh, and the ball is played over. A is given, Elia uh, plays it, and it's deflected into the net. 1-0 uh, for the DRC. Uh, however, Egypt get a penalty that Mustafa Mohammed can convert. And then a uh, whole lot of not much. I always felt that Egypt was a little bit more dominant, but the DRC was always ready to hit on the counter attack. But it was very clear that this was a game uh, going into overtime since it was a Sunday evening and I had to get up early in the morning. That's unfortunately where I had to turn off. Uh, I missed a, 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 some action. I mean, uh, the game that took a turn towards the uh, the Congo uh, because Hamdi got sent off with a second yellow card. So they suddenly had a little bit more, but um, Egypt go, go into the penalty shootout. And then, um, interesting enough, you know, as the rule, if you have, uh, um, a player sends a sent off, only 10 players of each team can take the penalty shootout. Uh, first round is converted, then Mustafa Mohammed, who just had converted in the game, misses one, but uh, uh, Masuaku also does not uh, call convert. And then everyone converts, everyone converts until we hit the ninth round. And Gabaski, the hero of the last Afghan uh, for Egypt panel, penalty shootout, Puts his one on the crossbar and then Basi and Zhao, the goalie for the DRC, converts and they move on. Uh, another upset. And I guess Mohamed Salah is squarely entering the same conversation as Lionel Messi that he needs to win this AFCON. Otherwise, he will not be considered a great Egyptian. It's a little bit of a sad, sad story because, yes. There are, there, are, there are definitely parallels there. He is probably the best Egyptian ever. However, the remainder of the team is not as good as these great Egypt teams from uh, like a bit more than a decade ago. And yeah, this will, is probably going to haunt him. I really think that Egypt sooner or later will win an AFCON. Um, but probably he will be at that point and more of a bit part player. But let's see about that. I, I don't want to fire on, uh, honestly, a little bit of a useless uh, debate. Cape Verde against Mauritania, another of outsiders, but Cape, Cape Verde, you know, have won the, uh, their group also quite convincingly. Um, but Mauritania gave a really good account of, of themselves, had a really good chance early in the uh, second half, where they probably should have converted. Um, and then it kind of fall, you know, they hold, hold on. And by the way, the goalie for Mauritania, I mean, I've never seen someone uh, so lanky, you know, really long arm, really long, uh, long legs, looks like he's been made from matchsticks or, or whatever. It was unlucky. I mean, Cape Verde, yes, are probably the better team. But the way that the penalty, the penalty uh, came, uh, came about, it was a uh, botched header back to the keeper. There was no other real chance where the keeper then takes out the striker and Mendes converts the penalty. Not much to talk home, home about. But yeah, the Sharks move on. The Sharks move on and have a pretty good chance of advancing further and uh, outdoing the best result. And then we had the little matter of Senegal against the Col Col Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, the Senegal were the best team in the group stage, winning all their games with relative ease. And the Cote d'Ivoire just squeaked through. I mean, if Morocco don't score that goal, the Cote d'Ivoire out. 
They had, of course, new coach Fay in there as, as well, which is another thing, you know, co-coaching, so maybe this was a coaching ethic. But for the first uh, 10 minutes or so, Senegal really were over the Cote d'Ivoire and take a deserved lead through uh, Diallo, who uh, was, was nice to see by Manet in the fourth minute or already silencing the crowd. And it seemed like it's only made of time until the end of the second. But then Manet makes a foul on Sangare. And there's a little bit of a uh, longer break because it was Sangare coming on or off. Uh, we don't quite know. And then the Cote d'Ivoire could settle and actually held their own. And the game became more and more even. It was kind of, I don't want to say stalemate, but it was really, really tight at that point. And the crowd was gone, 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 gone back in. And then uh, the next spark is uh, when Sebastian Allaire came, came on the 76th minute. Uh, and also Franck Cassier and Kouame. So Grasso, Sangare and Fofana all came on. Those three came on. And the crowd erupted there and almost immediately uh, Alea had, had had a pretty big chance and suddenly Senegal were shaky and uh, a, a clear penalty that the referee didn't see but then on VAR review is awarded to the call Cote Cote d'Ivoire and Cassier converts and the game goes to overtime and at that point I have, have to say they really really deserved that uh, because the Cote d'Ivoire in the last 50 minutes of, of, of the game really were pushing, look dangerous, throwing everything at the reigning champions. Overtime, um, again, was a little bit more than a more even affair. I thought that Manet had two big chances. Uh, yes, uh, saint Senegal also had in that uh, period where uh, the cold cut they were pressing had actually two really good chances that especially Sasa Sa 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 botched a little bit. Uh, same thing in overtime, he had, he had a good one where it was saved by the goalie, uh, that was, was, was the big, biggest one, but it was destined for penalties. And it was not as long of a penalty shoot as between uh, Egypt and the DRC, but still, uh, it went the whole length. The first four convert, then Nier Kate steps up and puts his one uh, onto the um, post. Sebastian Alea makes it 3-2 three, 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 and then everyone else converts. Uh, uh, Manet in his typical fashion just yanks yank in and then it has... Franck Cassier, who got already the equals, I know is a really good penalty taker, uh, having him seen at Milan. And yeah, he takes his time and converts well in both his penalties. Uh, goalie Mondi makes kind of a move first down. And if he does, doesn't do it, he has actually a good chance of saving that one, I thought. But yeah, the Cote d'Ivoire move on. I wouldn't call it as a sensation uh, per se, but the way they had, those teams have been performing, that the Coco Toko to make it through, is a, sens a sens sensation, and it gives them a new lease on life. And suddenly, they may might even be one of the favorites going forward with home field support. The problem is, will they be able to keep up this performance, even when they play a lesser opponent now? Because Senegal is the top. Top, 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 top. Now they need to play against other opponents that will not come at them as much. So that will be interesting. Then Mali against Burkina Faso. Uh, match between two of teams that I really, really like. Um, Burkina Faso strikes twice within the first few, 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 few minutes of each half. Uh, first one was a top sober own goal. Uh, was kind of weird because there was a header on the post and top sober cannot get his foot away. Clears it into his net. Uh, but Mali were the better team in the first half without creating many, many, many chances. Then Sina Yoko uh, after Traore pass was a really nicely played goal. Can make it quickly 2-0. Traoré, uh, <laughs> Petron Traoré, uh, pulls one back with a penalty in the 50, 50, 50, 57th, and then Mali got a little bit too passive and almost would have been um, um, punished for, for, for that because an equalizer did come, but it was an offside in the end. They hang on and Mali move through. I think the nicer jerseys moved through. That also can be said. And then we had a little med of Morocco against South Africa. Morocco... Uh, not been convincing so far, however, uh, clearly being seen as the best team of the tournament uh, because, you know, they were the semifinals at, at, at the World Cup. But their big problem is that at the World Cup, they could be the counter-attacking side. Here, they're the fav favorites and that is a different uh, pro proposition. In, in addition, the only team that has been beating them as of late from Africa were South Africa. So, you know, interesting. And while Morocco 
had more of the possession and they had a goal disallowed for offside in the first half. I always felt that South Africa is very dangerous on the counter and so it all really proved in 57th minute when Swane pulls in through Magoppa and he scores the 1-0 and I remember saying to him, yeah, and there's the last favorite gone uh, <laughs> in, in, in the way because South, South Africa, yeah. Sometimes you only need a goal because Morocco have trouble converting their chances. Um, However, the longer the game went, the more you could feel that South Africa hanging on. Morocco really threw everything at them. And then they get a penalty. And Hakimi, of course, steps themselves and puts it on the upside of the crossbar. At that point, it was really, really rough. Morocco, of course, desperate, uh, arguing for a huge stoppage time. They get, get the one, throw everything forward. There is another... Um, I think it sent a more, more Quenas than sent with, with, with a deep ball where Amrabat has no chance but taking him out. He first gets a, a second yellow, he will be sent off, but it then is a straight red card. And from the ensuing free kick, Mokwena makes it 2 0 and South Africa move on. And to be honest, the way South, South Africa look, I know I said this other before, but this might be a team that could do some damage as well. So, will be really, really, really in, in, in interesting. Now, the way the bracket sets up now um, is also, I mean, we have Nigeria big favorites over Angola, but we know this Nigeria team can be uh, devastating up front. Let's see what they can do and do on the back, but I would say that Nigeria have, have, have to be now considered uh, the favorites almost. Then Cape Verde against South Africa, I think this is a duel. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if one of these make the final. I'm not sure winning, winning it all, but um, those two teams can be there. They, they, they just did far outdo their own ex expectation. And an outsider's duel, a duel where I for sure have n <laughs> no jersey. The DRC against Guinea. I think the DRC will move on ag again. And then a neighboring duel between Mali and the Côte d'Ivoire. Another one where I'm a little bit sad that one of these teams have to go. But uh, that will definitely be a cracking match as well uh, when we look at uh, how it's expected to pan out of course nigeria favorites uh south africa actually favorites over the cape cape verde islands uh the congo also and with home field for the advantage the coco they were just about ahead of mali and yeah it's a nigeria against Cote d'Ivoire final projected now with even the cold Cote d'Ivoire thanks to home field advantage the favorites hmm interesting Definitely interesting. Didn't see that coming, but it makes for a really, really, really cool competition, I gotta say. As for the overall favorites, well, Nigeria is so huge favorites against Angola that they are uh, top of the line ahead of the Côte d'Ivoire, who have a much tougher opponent. Mali, who you see, is already in third. Uh, also, in the interesting, we have only three group winners. We have three uh, group runner-ups and two uh, third-place teams. So winning the group doesn't actually matter all that much, uh, if, if you uh, want to say. But yeah, uh, we have three teams and one of them will already be eliminated in qu uh, quarters that are clear favorites. And then a whole host of outsiders. I have a feeling we'll see an outsider in the final. I just cannot tell you which one. In any case, it has been a really, really exciting AFCON. Uh, please let, let me know what you thought about the games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.